What up, guys? Uh, this is Coach Vassar. Thank you for joining me. Uh, welcome to the OTF Audio Daily Beats. As always, if you're new to these, um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, as you listen to me ramble about workouts, uh, if you find value in them, of course, you could uh, find the information in the description on how to support me, but just buy me a coffee. Uh, nothing crazy. Um, completely optional. Appreciate if you do. Um, and thank you. Uh, this is going to be Monday, October 14th. This is a workout that will not repeat in the month, and it's going to be an ESP day. So uh, we'll go over like a little bit of everything and then treads, rower weight for differences that you'll see in the 3G. Uh, so for the key concepts on the treads, we're going to see three blocks. Uh, block one, we're going to accumulate distance on incline, strength. Block two, go all out. There's your power. And then in block three, how much or aim to match or beat your block one distance, but at flat road. So it's going to be your endurance. So really today is like a SPE day, which if you think about it, is one of better ways to kind of set it up. Um, in terms of like uh, aerobic activity. Um, since the legs are tired from the strength and the power, it's gonna make that endurance block just that much more challenging. For the row today, uh, there's gonna be one power row and block um, timed with the treads, and then can you match your all out intensities? So distance or wattage. Um, and then on the floor, we're gonna have two blocks, first total body circuit, and then rep and recover, where each round gets more challenging as the reps go up. So as you look at the, the tread side, uh, like I said, three blocks here. Block one, it's gonna be eight minutes. Block two, it's gonna be just over five minutes. And then block three, we're gonna see seven minutes there. Uh, block one is gonna probably be the spiciest one of the day. Uh, it's an eight minute tread for distance. They'll clear out the screen at the start. However, the key takeaway is power walkers, joggers, and runners, they're gonna start at an 8% incline. And every minute they're gonna decrease their incline. Uh, for anyone who is doing the bikes or striders, um, kind of the same idea. We'll start with like a push gear or more and then see if they could decrease gear and increase RPM. Uh, a good challenge is for them to start pretty high on that gear. So maybe four or five gears over base and then every other minute drop a gear. Um, for people on the treadmill themselves, uh, power walkers, 8% or greater, that's like a what we usually do for like a 30 second push. So maybe their walk speed is just a hair bit lower and as the incline drops, they could bump up their walk speed. Joggers and runners, uh, personally, I would recommend they start below their base or at base for the more like conservative range or maybe like a base push up to like a very conservative push. Uh, Cause that 8% incline is really gonna catch up quick, especially since they're doing that for the first minute. And then minute two is not much of a difference at 7% incline. So that added incline is almost as if they added, you know, about 1.5 miles an hour to their speed to begin with. So uh, it's gonna get pretty spicy, pretty tough to begin with. Um, we are gonna track total distance for those eight minutes and then we're gonna remember how far they got. When we look at block two, it's very simple. Equal work and rest, 45 second all out, 45 second walk recovery. Uh, the rowers are gonna be timed with that as well as mentioned in the key concepts. Um, looking to maintain because it's one-to-one, -one, it should be pretty simple to do. At least two or more of that base speed and just hit it every time. Maximize that recovery. So remind them to drop that speed under three if they need to during those walk recoveries. Now, block three, um, seven minutes total. They're gonna do a six minute tread for distance followed by a one minute all out. The tread for distance is at flat road. So power walkers, 1% um, or greater. Joggers and runners, uh, whatever speed that they wanna kind of maintain to collect as much distance so they can match or beat the distance they got while using incline. Um, so if they started at their base and they slowly bumped it up, um, maybe they start just above their base and continue to bump it up. And that's gonna be the, the tread side. Um, after that, for the weight floor, block one, eight minutes there, it's gonna be a circuit of three movements. Uh, we're gonna see hammer curl to shoulder press, single dumbbell sumo deadlift to a sumo squat, and then the high plank switch alternating low row. All three movements have anywhere from six to 10 reps, um, moderate to heavy weight on that weight selection. Obviously, if they go heavier, they'll probably get less reps. If they go a little bit lighter, they'll get more reps, but they could also just you know, go off of what feels good for them today. Um, knowing that it is a circuit and we're doing a little bit of upper body, lower body, and then core work, maybe minimal downtime here. We'll probably see about three, maybe four rounds. Um, obviously, if they go super heavy and they have to rest after each exercise, that's totally fine. Now, when it comes to the row, um, it's gonna be time with the treads. I personally would do a 45 second countdown. Um, and then for the rest, just rack and rest. 
Um, 45 second all out row, they recommend somewhere between 150 to 250 plus meters. So if they wanna use the distance metric as a way to maintain intensity, obviously match their distance, um, they have to keep the same intensity or they could look at average watts. So can they hold their same watts every round, every time? Um, in total, they're gonna see four all outs there. After that, they'll have 90 seconds to head back to the weight floor. Weight floor is gonna be uh, timed. We're gonna have one minute intervals and we're gonna be alternating between two different movements. You have the strap bridge row and the hand release push up. For round one, you'll have a minute for the first movement, 10 reps. Uh, should take you about 15 to 20 seconds, maybe a little bit more. And then after that, rest for the remainder of that minute. On the next minute, we switch to the hand release push up. And same thing, they'll do 10 reps. That completes round one. So they both do 10 for those. When we look at round two, it's still a minute, but now it's 12 reps for both movements. And then for round three, 14 reps. So as the reps go up, they get less recovery. Um, for the bridge row, maybe they move away from the wall. And for that hand release push up, maybe they start you know, off their knees and then eventually maybe they do drop to their knees or they switch to a regular push up. Finisher is gonna be a low plank. So after they finish that last hand release push up, they could just lay there before they tackle their low plank. And that's it. Nice and simple there for the uh, 2G. Now when we look at the 3G here, uh, it's gonna be slightly different in terms of um, setup. So the treadmills, um, they're gonna be starting at that 8% incline, but it's gonna be a five minute block this time instead of eight minutes. So they're not gonna get all the way down to flat road. Um, still, they'll start at 8% incline every minute. They'll take away an incline. Um, other than that, it's gonna be the same thing as the treads. So block number two, power block here, 30 second intervals between the all out and the walk recovery, um, three all outs there. And then the third block, this will be repeat in block one, but flat road, so tread for distance. It's gonna be four and a half minutes. Um, four minute tread, 30 second all out. And then obviously try to match or beat their block one distance. Now the rower is gonna be one long block. They're gonna start with a body weight movement for the alternate and forward lunge. Uh, reverse lunge is of course a good option there. And then they have an 800 meter row. They choose the intensity, but ideally every round row gets shorter. So increase intensity. So can they add to their average watts or notice their split time and try to drop their split time every round, especially with the 800 and 600 meter row, long time to really establish a good rhythm and keep that stroke rate consistent and their split time consistent for those longer intervals. Now on the weight floor, we're only gonna have two blocks here. Um, and this is gonna be slightly different than what we saw in the um, 2G. In the, um, 1G, in the 3G, the first block, eight minutes, 45 seconds, we're gonna see the same circuit as well in block one. So hammer curl to shoulder press, uh, single dumbbell sumo deadlift into the sumo squat and the high plank switch low row. They'll repeat that for those eight minutes and 45 seconds, six to 10 reps. But now the block two is no longer rep and recover. They're just gonna do eight reps for each movement of the hand release push up and the strap bridge row. And they'll repeat that for four and a half minutes. Um, obviously upper body push, upper body pull, the transition as they stand up and lay down is gonna be part of that recovery. Um, we'll probably see two, three, four rounds here, depending on how fast they move and their range of motion. And then their finisher is to keep working. So increase intensity, uh, nice and simple there. Their goal there, of course, is to get at least two plus rounds in those four and a half minutes. And that's the 3G. Um, that's all I got for you guys on this one. Uh, as I said, this is gonna be one of the last standard um, non-repeat workouts. There's one more in the month. And of course that's the one mile benchmark. And that's like basically every one mile benchmark workout. So nothing too crazy there. Anyways, uh, any feedback as always, let me know. Um, if you found value in them, information's in the description to support me. Other than that, coach it down.